please welcome the next president of the United States, President Donald J. Trump. Well, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. The weather was a little rough, but there was no way I was going to miss it. And I uh, see we have a lot of media here. That's nice. Always nice. There are deep friends, right? <laughs> but we're getting better over the years, much better. But I do want to uh, say hello to everybody. This is a special place to me, and we're going to have a big victory. The polls are looking tremendous in Michigan and Wisconsin. And uh, we are we're going to do something, I think, that's very very special. I think it's going to be a very special election. I've been saying November 5th of this year is going to be the most important day in the history of our country. I believe that. So just remember that. We're here this afternoon in Grand Rapids, Michigan, 1,283 miles from the southern border. You've been hearing a lot about the southern border over the last couple of years. We put up a chart which is uh, border-related, and you see the lowest point in history was just before I left just as I was leaving, that was the lowest point. You see the arrows pointing? Yeah. And I think that chart spells out better than anything I can say today. In fact, I don't have to say anything. I can just leave. Just take a look at that. <laughs> that is, the, uh, that is the, the best. And then it looks like a rocket ship went off. Uh, when you look at the other numbers, it's a shame. It's a sad shame. Under Crooked Joe Biden, every state is now a border state. Every town is now a border town because Joe Biden has brought the carnage and chaos and killing from all over the world and dumped it straight into our backyards. And people are coming in from prisons and mental institutions, and nobody's ever seen anything like it. Under the Trump administration, we had a tough policy of getting the bad people out. We wanted to get them out. We took them out by the thousands, and we took, uh, as an example, the MS-13 gangs out. Uh, the countries didn't want to let them back in. And I said, well, then we're not giving you any money. We give them so much money. In this case, $793 million. I said, that's okay. We're not going to give you any money. And they said, well, we'd be glad to have MS-13 coming back into our country. It'd be an honor. And uh, they took them back, but they wouldn't take them back under Obama. Under the Obama administration with Biden, they wouldn't take them back. And I was told that they won't take them back. And I said, really, what do we give them? And it was close to $800 million. I said, tell them we're not giving it to them anymore. And they immediately said, let's take them back. That was about, that lasted, that negotiation. Sheriffs lasted about three minutes and we succeeded. That was an easy one. Now under Biden, the bad ones are coming in at a level that nobody ever thought was even possible. Nobody thought this was possible. In Venezuela, the crime is down 67% from what it was a year and a half ago because they're taking all of their gangs and all of their criminals and they're depositing them into the United States of America. Venezuela, think of it, their crime. Wouldn't we love to have a statistic where crime is down 67%? Ours is only going in one direction, and it's going to be very bad now because we have a new form of crime. It's called migrant crime. They're having fistfights with our police officers right in the middle of streets. They're sending prisoners, murderers, drug dealers, mental patients, and terrorists, the worst they have in every country all over the world. This isn't just in South America. They're coming from the Congo, from Yemen, from Somalia, from Syria. They come from all over the world, China. They're, many of them are military age, which is a very strange. You don't see very many women coming in. And, you see a lot of them coming in they're about 19 to 25, 26 years old, and especially from China. We have 29,000 over the last few months, 29,000 from China, and they all seem to be uh, perfectly fit for military service, ready for military service. It's crazy. This is country changing. It's country threatening, and it's country wrecking. They have wrecked our country. But I stand before you today to declare the Joe Biden's border bloodbath, and that's what it is. It's a bloodbath. They tried to use that term incorrectly on me two weeks ago. You know, it's all about misinformation. That's all they do is cheat on elections and disinformation, misinformation, fairly closely related, those two words. But they basically mean that uh, it's all talk. But it's a border bloodbath, and it's destroying our country. It's a very bad thing happening. It's uh, going to end on 
the day that I take office, which will be January 20th, it'll end. And thank you. I want to thank members of Congress. A lot of great congressmen are here, warriors, really. They've fought with me for a long time. John James, John Molinar, and Jack Bergman. They're great friends of mine, and they've, uh, they love your state. They love your state. I want to really thank and congratulate, because this guy has gone like a rocket ship. I've never seen it. Well, I have a couple of times. We've got a lot of people elected. Those endorsements are pretty good. But, you know, you still have to endorse the right person. Otherwise, it doesn't work. And uh, your next U.S. Senator, Mike Rogers, who is going to be fantastic, wherever Mike is. Wherever Mike is. Thank you, Mike. Thank you, Mike. Uh, he was a great congressman. He was a tough guy, too. He had one little... Uh, Sabbatical, we went to CNN for a little while, and it's okay, you know, they say kind of it. <laughs> but, but other than that, uh, he's been great. Well, that's good, because now you'll get a few of the more moderate people who are being nice, but he's a, he's a very respected person. Uh, he's the one we wanted. He's the one that decided to do it, and he's going to be a fantastic, I think he's going to be a fantastic U.S. Senator, always respected at the highest level. And uh, it was always fair to us, too. When he was on, when he did his television thing, he was always fair, strong, fair. Uh, I also want to thank Michigan Senate Republican leader, Eric Nesbitt. Where is Eric? I think you're around here someplace, Eric. Good. Great job you're doing, Eric. Michigan House Republican leader, Matt Hall. Matt. Good. They stand right in the middle, those guys. Former Detroit police chief, James Craig. Good guy, too. Good guy. Good guy. Knows his way around and has done a great job. Thank you very much. We have great support. I think he just supported uh, Mike, actually, didn't he? Did, yes, he? Did he I did. hear that? That's, that's, a big, that's, that's a big endorsement. That's a great endorsement. Thank you, James. Second best. Yeah, second best. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you. Actually, Mike went up 61 points. Can you imagine that? He went up 61 points. And that's, uh, that's really... Uh, that's quite a raise. He went up in one night, and he's, uh, I think that primary is over. I think he's focused now on the Democrat, and the Democrat's a radical left lunatic and uh, doesn't represent what Michigan stands for, I can tell you. doesn't represent the auto workers, uh, wants to do the all-electric cars all over the place that are all going to be made in China, and uh, very bad. So I think, I think that Mike Rogers is going to have tremendous success against her. Former Michigan Attorney General Bill Schutte, and uh, thank you, Bill, very much. Thank you. And many other distinguished guests. We've got a lot of people here, some ex-congressmen, some congressmen. I'm not going to go into it because we want to get down to business. We want to just uh, get our country going again. We want to get the border closed, or we want to have people come into our country but come in legally, right? Legally. <laughs> Moments ago, I met with an incredible group of local law enforcement leaders to discuss how Michigan communities are being ravaged by a new form of crime, and that's the migrant crime that we name it. It should be called Biden migrant crime, but that's too long. But you'll always remember it was Biden that gave it to us. Eleven days ago, right here in Kent County, a 25-year-old Michigan woman named Ruby Garcia, who has become a very well-known name, beautiful young woman was savagely murdered by an illegal alien criminal under the Trump administration. This monster had been deported, thrown out of the country, he wasn't going to be able to come back because you just have to look at the charts. It was very, very hard to get in. But he came back and uh, we threw him out of the country and crooked Joe Biden took him back and let him back in and let him stay in. And he, he viciously killed Ruby. The illegal alien charged with Ruby's really heinous killing, and he, this is somebody that had many, many arrests, including for uh, some very bad crimes that he committed. And he was set loose to roam our streets, and in this case, uh, set loose to roam in Michigan by politicians that are left and weak and stupid. On March 22nd, he shot 17-year-old Ruby. Actually, she was... Uh, a beautiful, beautiful young woman. Uh, Ruby Garcia was uh, shot multiple times with an illegally obtained handgun. Her body was dumped on the side of a highway, left to die, actually. Had a little life left, left to die. 
And uh, Ruby passed away, and it's been a big story because it's so horrible. Some of these horrible stories, there's so many of them. You could go on for days, but some of them just, uh, they resonate so much more. For whatever reason, they're all so horrible, and there's so many of them. Now Ruby's loved ones and community are left grieving for this incredible young woman, remembering what they called her. They said she had just this most contagious laughter. And when she walked into a room, she lit up that room. And I've heard that from so many people. I spoke to some of her family. Two months ago, another illegal alien criminal was sentenced in Kent County by extending attempted versions of various forms of strangulation. They were looking for this particular killer all over the country. Uh, he was allowed to come into our country by a very weak border policy. And just a few weeks ago, I met with the grieving family of Lakin Riley. You know Lakin. She's, uh, she was incredible. Top of her class. Everything was the top. She was the top of everything. She was incredible. I met the parents. Incredible people. The 22-year-old nursing student in Georgia who was barbarically murdered by an illegal alien animal, uh, the Democrats say, please don't call them animals. They're humans. I said, no, they're not humans. They're not humans. They're animals. Nancy Pelosi told me that. She said, please don't use the word animal, sir, when you're talking about these people. I said, I'll use the word animal because that's what they are. I'll never forget my vow to her wonderful mother, father, and sister two weeks ago. And uh, I said, I will deliver justice for Lakin. I said that, and now, today, I'm adding something. It's going to be for Lakin, and it's also justice for Ruby. We're going to deliver justice for Ruby. We're going to watch what happens with this thug. We're going to watch what happens. And we have all the law enforcement behind. They're going to be watching what happens to this thug. He's not going to get away with it. So many people get away with it. They say, oh, let him go, let him go. I'm the only one that has to put up a bond. You know, I put up a bond. I didn't do anything wrong. I had to put up a bond this morning for $175 million. I did nothing wrong. They can shoot somebody, kill somebody, and walk out of jail an hour later. How about that? Do you think that's a fair policy? That's, that's called radical left. But not one more innocent life should be lost to Biden migrant crime. The first step to restoring safety in America is to fire crooked Joe Biden. Get him out November 5th. And we're going to get him out. We're going to we're going to have we're going to have more people voting, I think, than anybody can even imagine. And if uh, that happens, if we swamp them, if we swamp them, you know, swamps too. First, you want to drain the swamp, but you want to for purple very successfully. We're all ready to add another 200. That's far more than I said I was going to build, but it works so well. We got Mexico to send 28,000 soldiers for those people to say Mexico. Oh, they didn't give the war. Well, they didn't give the war. They gave more. They gave us 28,000 soldiers for years. That's why my numbers were so good. 28,000 soldiers. I said, you have to give them. They said, uh, we wouldn't do that. Why would we do that? By the way, did you see Mexico's now asking for $20 billion a year to a year? to even sit down and talk to these people. They wouldn't ask me for that. $20 billion a year. Have you seen that? I don't know, Mike Rogers. I think we're going to have to stop that. But $20 billion a year they want just to sit down and talk. Think of it. How crazy is it all? Where have we come? But they said, uh, no, 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 we won't give you soldiers. Why would we do that? Oh, he said, yes, you will. Oh, you're going to give me the soldiers. No, 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 we will not do that. Of course, you know, that's what you'd say. That's what it... I'd say, you will do it 100%. I will do anything you ask, including I will make a really major bet. You will do it. The 28,000, nope, we won't do it. I said, here's the story. If you don't have this approved, it was Friday evening, immediately I'm going to sign a bill where we're going to tariff your cars and all of the other things you send in to hurt Michigan and to hurt other people. But regardless of that, because the new threat is China is now building factories. Not with me, they weren't. In Mexico, they're going to build cars in Mexico and sell them, and they think they're going to sell them over our border with no tax, okay? It's not going to happen with me. With Biden, it's going to happen. And Michigan and the United Auto Workers will be totally out of business. They're the biggest, they're the biggest car plants anywhere in the world, and they're building them in Mexico. A friend of mine builds plants. That's all he can do. He can't walk across the street, but he's the greatest builder of car plants. If you ask this guy... Uh, who won the game last night? I don't know. I couldn't care less. All he can do is build plants. He's unbelievable. 
I said, I want to take a look at some of the plants. He said, okay, are you ready to go to Mexico? So that was bad enough. Then he said, because China is building the largest plants anywhere in Mexico, right along the border, and they're going to make cars. They're not doing it with me. With me, they're going to be tariffed to a level that those cars will not happen. They can't do this to us. They've already done. And whoever heads the, the auto workers, United Auto Workers, should be ashamed of himself approving the electric vehicles, all electric. It's the craziest thing. They don't go far. I was just telling the people in the back, I was going to use folks, but I don't like using the word because Biden uses it every single speech. Hello, folks. You know, it's like a nervous habit with him. Hello, folks. Thank you, folks, 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 hundreds of times. So I just sort of put that out. Of, so, But I was telling the people behind me, it would have been a nice time to use that term, too. But I said that, uh, you know, when you look at all of the horrible decisions that have been made, but this decision with the electric vehicle, I mean, outside of allowing prisoners and uh, mental institution people and terrorists into our country with no checks, no nothing, no, no checks, no nothing, by the millions and millions, the electric vehicle one is one of the dumbest I've ever heard, too, because I was in a beautiful place called Iowa, and we had the Iowa primary, which I won by the highest number in history, by the way, which we're very happy about that. By double the highest, actually. We had double the, the highest, the best margin doubled. Anyway, so I love it. But it happened to be a little cold that night. It was 40 degrees below zero. And there were more electric cars. I said, what are all those cars doing all over the streets? They're electric cars, sir. They don't work in the cold. So they're going to have to do a little business first. And I want them people to buy an electric car if you want one. But I want them to be able to buy every other form of transportation, every other. F I want you to use gasoline a lot because we have more gasoline than any country anywhere in the world. So we're playing into China because they're going to make all the oil. That's what they have. They have that. We have gas. We have gasoline. We have oil and gas. We have gasoline. And I said, isn't it a shame? We play away from our strength, and we play right into their strength by doing this. And the first day, I promise you, I will sign with the electric vehicle mandate is gone. If you want an electric car, you can buy it, but you're going to be able to buy every other form of of push every other form of car and engine and motor that you want and you're going to have it and the car companies are going to have to go back you know i don't know if you know it the reason the car companies the massive subsidy that this country is paying to try and get these cars sold we have hundreds of thousands of cars electric they can't sell them people don't want them and you got to go with the market we've sold about five percent of our our cars are electric, and that's fine. I think they're fine if you like to go short distances. If you want to take a trip, I don't think you want to do that. I'm, I don't recommend electric. Maybe someday they'll be able to do it, but right now they're not even close. So we're going to end that immediately. We're going to end it day one. But we had remain in Mexico. Think of this. We had the 28,000 soldiers, and when I said I want them now, we had them the following week. We had the, That's why our numbers are so good. But we have Remain in Mexico, Safe Third Country Agreements, Asylum Bans, Title 42. When people were sick, we don't want them coming into our country with contagious diseases, and they have it. And all of a sudden, you see these contagious diseases spreading, and everyone's saying, I wonder where they came from. I can tell you where they came from. And we had what's called a rapid removal policy, very rapid removal, like how about the following day and even that evening. And all of that's been ended by Crooked Joe Biden. It's just so sad, and that's why you see the numbers on the chart, where they look like the rocket ship. Joe Biden and his party came in, and they blew it all up. Everything was — all the things we did, in so many other ways, too, with trade, so many things. We took in hundreds of billions of dollars from China, and they're soft on China. They're soft on everybody, everybody but me. They're very tough on me. They are soft on everybody, but they're tough on me. But that's okay. It's going to all work out very nicely. Because the people of this country understand it. You can't interfere with elections like they do. And it's the only thing he's got going, if you think about it. The border policies are horrible. All of his policies are hor horrible. You look at inflation, inflation's through the roof. No matter what money people are making, the inflation is better. Unless you quadrupled your salary, uh, the inflation is just destroying people in this country. Where bacon is up three and four times, where... The food prices are so bad. The energy prices — and by the way, energy is going up again, in case you haven't noticed. Fentanyl and opioid deaths in your state are up 32 percent. 
and deadly drugs pour across the border at levels that nobody's ever seen before, steering thousands and thousands of uh, this tremendous, these vats of poison right into Michigan lives. And once peaceful, suburban Michigan is really now, you're under an invasion, and there's no way you can vote for this guy. I mean, look, I don't want to be uh, too casual about it. There's no way you can vote for this guy. Uh, you see what I see. And there's just no way. If he makes it to the starting gate, which I, I, I find it hard to believe, but if he does, there's just no way. Uh, we have to get law and order back. These are the best people in the world. They will know the sheriffs behind me. And in, this is in all states. Somebody said, how will you get these criminals out? I say the sheriffs, the police, the police officers, the police, the law enforcement in their local communities, their local, they know every bad kid. They know every bad person. They know their first name, their middle name. They know their phone numbers. They have their cell phones. They have everything about them. They know exactly what to do and how to do it. These guys know exactly what I'm talking about, but we have to let them do their job. And we're going to work out a federal immunity for police so they're allowed to do their job without losing their house and their pension <laughs> and everything else when the, when the liberal governors and mayors don't back them. In Troy, Michigan, a band of illegal alien thieves recently went on a rampage at a local mall, breaking into the diamond store, smashing the display cases with hammers, attacking the employees, and making off with armloads of jewelry. You read about that, a lot of jewelry. Oakland County organized squads of illegal alien gang members are helping, and they're hiding all over and breaking into Rural communities, they're hiding in bushes, actually, they say. They hide in bushes, and then they break into a house when the people leave, and sometimes when the people are there, which is probably worse. But into the rural communities, suburban communities. And, you know, the suburban housewives actually like Donald Trump. You know why? Because I'm the one that's going to keep them safe. They, they like to say, well, the suburban housewives, I don't know. I think I do great with the suburban housewives because they want to remain safe. <laughs> But they loot the jewelry, they take their purses, electronics, watches, all of their cash, and the people come back and they say, what happened? If you don't want illegal alien criminals crawling through your windows and ransacking your drawers, then you must vote for the fact that we have to throw crooked Joe Biden out as fast as possible. The damage he can do, and, t and we're talking about a certain type of damage, and even bigger damage could be World War III, because this guy has no clue. He can't put two sentences together. And he's dealing with Putin, and he's dealing with President Xi, and he's dealing with Kim Jong-un. All people I know very well. We were under no threat from anybody until this guy got in office. Now they're talking nuclear all the time. We didn't talk nuclear. I rebuilt our nuclear power to a level that nobody has. But you don't mention it, and you don't talk about it. But now Putin's talking about it. And now Kim Jong-un again is talking about it. You had four safe years. You were safe because they respected your president and they respected the United States of America. And now you're not safe, I will tell you. We could end up in World War III with this lunatic. In various counties recently, three illegal alien migrants were arrested for soliciting sex from children, yet the radical left-wing governor Gretchen Whitmer, a real beauty she is. I had to deal with her in COVID. She was hard. The only one that was able to go sailing was her husband, right? Her husband went sailing, and everybody else is locked in their house. Uh, how did that work out? Not too good. But it's, she's now pushing Michigan families to accept $500 a month to take illegal aliens into your homes. They, want, they don't say this for our veterans that are on the street. They don't say this for other people, but they say it for migrants coming in because they want them to vote, probably. In other words, Biden and Whitmer are stealing your money to give free housing to illegals and then asking you to quarter these people, put them in your homes and feed them and do everything else. And it's just the whole thing is so, is so crazy. And she's a terrible governor, by the way. Your streets are bad. Your everything's bad. She, come, she used to come to the White House. She was so nice. And then she'd go say, I don't like that man. I say, wait a minute. I was very nice, wasn't I? <laughs> But when I'm president, instead of asking you to cram illegal aliens into your homes, I'll tell you that the illegal alien trespassers, they must go back to their homes. They have to go back because no country, no country can withstand this invasion. There isn't a country in the world that can, I don't care how much money, and we don't, we owe $34 trillion. 
There's no country in the world that who withstand the the cost of this, and maybe more important than actual dollar cost, the the cost that it's doing. It's wrecking our civilization. It's destroying our country. On day one, I will seal the border and we'll begin the largest domestic deportation operation in the history of our country. And if other countries say they won't take them back, we're not going to take them back. I will say that, uh, yeah, here they come. You just you know, hold on, hold on to your britches because here they come. They're coming back. Congratulations. And if you don't think these countries send them, and they send the people, by the way, that they want out, they're not sending their finest. They're sending people that they want. That's why they come out of jails and prisons. That's why they come out of the mental institutions and insane asylums. Uh, human trafficking now is that we, mostly women is at the highest level. We had it went to the lowest level in 37 years. I had it down to the lowest level in 37 years, and now it's at the highest level ever. And this is human trafficking, mostly in women. We will stop the plunder, rape, slaughter, and destruction of our American suburbs, cities, and towns. We will end deadly sanctuary cities immediately. I will shift massive portions of federal law enforcement to immigration enforcement, and we will impose a naval blockade on the cartels, and we will hit the cartels very hard, but we're going to impose a naval blockade because when the la land gets clogged, you know, these are rather smart people. They go this way with the boats. They have some pretty good boats, too. I tell you, they have a lot of money. They have unlimited money. The money they've made, they've made more money than the corporations that you read about on the covers of the magazines don't make the kind of money these cartels are making. Now I'd like to invite some of the heroes, really, law enforcement professionals here to speak, say, for just a few minutes, the Biden border bloodbath. They want to talk about it, and we will talk about it. Our country is in trouble. We're a nation in decline. We're not going to let it happen. We've got to stop it. We've got to win on November 5th, and it's all going to stop, and it's going to stop very quickly. Thank you very much. If I could, I'll ask Police Officers Association of Michigan, President James Tiganelli, to come up. He's a fantastic man, respected all over the country. Thank you. James, please. What an honor to be here, and with all these leaders of law enforcement and Congress uh, but with you here, Thank you. waiting for the next trip up to uh, D.C. with you. The, uh, I wanted to tell you a little bit about, about recruiting, retention, and what the life of the police are like right now that we know that you were going to fix for us because you did the last time just because of how you feel about us. Forty-five years ago, 45, yeah. number sounds to me, right? <laughs> Forty-five years ago, uh, I, when I hired on at the job, 2,000 people would apply for 200 positions. Right. It, because this job of sh deputy sheriff and police officer was a very honorable job. The guy down the street, you all knew where they lived. You all looked for them for leadership. And nowadays, and let's say the last 10 years, we can't get enough people to fill the vacancies. The academies are empty. Nobody's coming along. And we can't get enough candidates. So why does that happen? It's, it's not because there's no desire. It's because of recruiting. Right. And recruiting, to me, was always the uh, um, grandpa, Uncle Joe, who was a police officer. Maybe it was the baseball coach that was a cop during the week. He was the guy that you respected. I didn't come from a law enforcement family, but I came up as a law enforcement officer because they were important to me. On the east side of Detroit, you needed to have a few friends in a PD. The uh, 48205, this is now the most violent zip code in America, I believe. That's where I was at. But there's no way we can have a president of the United States that allows three million people a year or more, I'm sure, to come across the, uh, to come out of our country illegally. We can't allow that to continue. It's, uh, those who enter, they do so in the light of day. They do it by pushing aside our National Guard. Then they're handed a, a, you know, a gift card, they're handed a telephone or an iPad, transportation to anywhere in the U.S. that they want to go. And then you want to tell these law-abiding people that are here, uh, you have to obey the law. There seems like there's no real reason to do that anymore. And that's made it very hard to be policing because people look to us, the, the law-abiding people look to us, but they're saying, what about that person? What about that? You've, as you've talked about here today, it, my mom used to say it takes the wind out of your sails. You just kind of, everything calms down and it's not so good. The felons that we arrest become misdemeanors and then they become no bond and then they become free guys really before we get our car cleaned out at the end of the shift. Why would you expect people to obey the law when millions are rewarded for disobeying it? 
I don't know how many officers must get injured or killed and, or, or worse, the, the, the civilians out there that are injured or assaulted or killed and, and assaulted. We've heard about a couple of them here tonight. I know that we can fill these vacant jobs with good people. I know they're out there. I know we can recruit them, but we need a commander in chief that will give them just simple due process. You've talked about some of the things that are important to us, but they just need, they just need to know they've got somebody behind them a little bit instead of trying to push them backwards, pushing them forward. I think that'll help to restore the honor to this job that, that was once such an honorable one. I can promise you that our guys will put that suit on and go out and do the job for you. They really will, and they'll be better for all of the people in this room when that happens. We always were what stood between uh, law-abiding citizens and chaos. You hear about it all night. You've talked about it here today. Uh, instead of those efforts to make the United States look weak and, and the poor and uh, average, we need you. We need you to make America look great again. And, uh, and I, know you, I know you have that. I know it's there. Uh, last week when you went to New York and you attended the viewing of Jonathan Doerr, uh, I just wanted you to know that that brought honor to every police officer, every deputy sheriff, every law enforcement officer, wherever we were in this country, when we saw what you did, it was like, that's cool, that's us, that's, that's a boost for all of us. It was so, it's so good. Uh, I hope that you'll consider with the Congress and the Senate here that we have that uh, you'll support legislation to make a, 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 a death penalty for killing a police officer while on duty. And I'll leave you with this. Uh, we supported you. We endorsed you in 2016. We were the first guys in Michigan. And you, you sent me a little video, and we still have it. it was, uh, we were proud to, proud to do it. We were there in 2020. And I'll tell you, we're here in 2024. And today, on behalf of 12,000 law enforcement people that the Police Officers Association of Michigan represent, we want you to accept our endorsement for President of the United States. Very important. We got it. We got it. Thank you for the time. Thank you very much. Wow. Thank you very much. That's very nice. That's a great honor, and thank you very much. And uh, we will we will make you proud. We will make you proud. I do want to thank uh, the family of because I met with Stephanie. That's Jonathan's beautiful wife, Jonathan Diller, and. Uh, I met with the whole family. These are incredible people. What happened to Jonathan should never have happened. And uh, they were just uh, devastated. But the spirit and the love and the numbers of police that were there, and fire, the firemen, firewomen, uh, the number of people that were there was incredible. It just was incredible. But that's an incredible family. So we send our love. Uh, I said to Stephanie, he will not have died in vain. So, but I thank you very much for the endorsement. Thank you. So, uh, if I might, we're going to do this very quickly. Uh, Sheriff Daniel Abbott, as you know, uh, Van Buren County, highly respected, and he's going to say a few words. Thank you, Daniel. So, I'll make this pretty brief. I was asked to hit on how the open borders are affecting us here in southwestern Michigan. Um, our county is actually on the southwestern part of Michigan, only Berrien's below us. I ran some numbers yesterday in our jail facility. 40% of our inmates in our jail in Van Buren County have out-of-county residency. Out of the 40% that do not live in our county that we're feeding every day, 10% of those have addresses from Mexico or Guatemala. Put that in perspective. We're, we are a rural community. 10% of the folks in our jail are from Mexico or Guatemala. They're not in our jail by coincidence. We didn't just see them walking down the road and saying, you know what, I don't think you belong here. They're in our jail because they committed crimes. If you look at the heinous crimes that they committed, the one that really jumped out at us is all the violent sex crimes. And it's not just against adults. It's against our children as well in our community, and that's appalling. To go even further on that, with the open borders the way they are, when President Trump was in office, our narcotic unit was buying a ball of meth, which is 3.5 ounces of meth, for $300 to $350 for a ball. As of this past week, a ball is $85 because the market's flooded. 
by the tons coming across the open borders and semis. And when I say tons, I mean tons. It used to be a thing of the past, or it is a thing of the past, folks doing, um, making the meth in their, in their own residences. They don't do it anymore because the cartel's bringing it in by the tons. They're not having to make it inside their residences, hence the cheap amount that's going out and, and the amount that's on the street. It's disturbing. I've got a few bullet points I want to really drive home to you folks. Um, career law enforcement officers have faced incredible challenges these past four years for several reasons. The drastic rise in fentanyl as well coming over the border has touched just about every family in southwestern Michigan. You guys all see it on the news on a regular basis. All the ODs and uh, domestic situations that we handle in law enforcement. We handle roughly two overdose deaths a week in our county. Keep in mind, our county is only 76,000 population. So at least twice a week, we're handling those. And those are numbers I ran yesterday. I just didn't make those numbers up. That's disturbing. It's getting in our schools. It's getting in our children's hands. It's very disturbing. It's killing our kids. It's poisoning our communities. It's making the jobs of law enforcement professionals much more difficult. The open southern border is the heart of lawlessness and crime you're witnessing. No, make no bones about it. We need leadership at the national level that is willing to solve this crisis. President Trump, without a doubt, is the leader we need to get the job done and get America safe. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, Allegan County Sheriff Frank Baker to say a few words, please. Frank. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Mr. President. It's truly an honor to be here today and talk about something that's very near and dear to my heart, as well as my fellow sheriffs, and that's safety within our communities. And one of the biggest things that we're facing now, and Sheriff Abbott mentioned it, is um, the, the crime, the level of crime we're seeing, but uh, the, the amount of narcotics, the illegal narcotics, whether it's methamphetamine or fentanyl, it's devastating our communities. And something needs to be done about that. And the only way we can do anything is to secure the border. A lot of times people ask me, you know, the border is a long way from Allegan County. And yes, it is. But there's not a day goes by that's not impacting what happens in our county because of the amount of drugs that we're seeing. We used to be known as the meth capital of the world, jokingly people would say, because of the number of methamphetamine labs that we'd made arrests for. We don't make arrests for methamphetamine labs anymore. I mean, it's, it's a thing of the past because... The illegal drugs that are, we're seeing now, the crystal methamphetamine, is so cheap, as Sheriff Abbott had mentioned, it's cheaper to buy it than it is to make it. So uh, we, we have a crisis on our hands, and we need help. And uh, part of that help is going to be securing our borders. So I appreciate you taking the time to meet with us today to talk about this, this important topic to us. Because there are a lot of tragedies that are happening. You mentioned it with Ruby Garcia. In fact, a couple of our deputies uh, made the arrest of the suspect in that case last month. So uh, it's happening in our, in our neighborhoods, even though the border is a long ways away, and we need help. And so I appreciate what you're doing to help us and meeting with us today to talk about this concern. Thank you. Thank you, Sheriff. Great, great people behind me. Is Tom Holman here by any chance? Tom? Tom Holman? Where's Tom Holman? Because I wanted to pay tribute to him. He is some man. And uh, I know he was around here. I said hello. I said, I might bring you up, but I'm not going to bring him up because he's not here. <laughs> he had to get back to capture people. But I just want to thank Tom Holman. He has been so special. He's been so great on television. He's been so respectful of the job that we did as an administration. We had such great numbers, and we took over a tough situation, and we had great numbers. You know, in 2016, I ran on the border, and uh, in 2020, we did such a good job. I couldn't even talk about the border. The people would say, sir, they don't want to hear about the border. I said, no, no, we did a great job. We have to talk about it. Sir, they don't care. You fix the border. The border is great. You see the numbers up there. The border is great. Uh, nobody cares about the border. And now we have today. Today, the border is a hundred times worse than it ever was in 2016. That was, I call it peanuts. That was peanuts. That was small time. And uh, today, it's the worst border anywhere, I think, in the world. There's never been a border like this anywhere in the world where millions and millions of people are coming. Thousands of people come over an hour. And uh, there's never been anything like it. We're going to fix it. We're going to close it. And we're going to do many other things that we're not here to talk about, but we're going to make our country great again. We're going to 
We are not now a great country. We are a country that is in serious decline. And we're not going to let that happen to our country. We're going to fix the economy. We're going to get inflation under control. Inflation's up probably real numbers, 50 percent in the last few years. And people are being destroyed just going to the grocery store. That's why I hear it the most. They go out for groceries. They can't believe it. They're paying four and five times more than they did two or three years ago. But we're going to fix our country. We're going to be respected again all over the world. I'm going to keep you out of World War III. We're not going to have World War III. Right now, the way we're going, you're going to have World War III. And we're going to do a real job. We gave you the largest tax cut in history, largest regulation cuts in history. We took care of our soldiers. We rebuilt our military. We beat ISIS, and we didn't go into any wars. Everyone said, remember when Hillary Clinton said, look at him. He's going to get us into wars. I, I got us out of wars. And... Uh, but we knocked out ISIS, and we knocked out everything we had to do, and we rebuilt that military to a level. Unfortunately, he gave a lot of it away to Afghanistan. But uh, as much as it was, it was a small portion compared to what we did. We, built a, we rebuilt our entire military, and I'm very proud of it. We have a great military. They're not woke, like people think. A couple of people on top are. They'd like to be, but we're not. Our military is amazing. What they did with ISIS it was supposed to take four years, and it took me a couple of months to knock out ISIS 100%. Do you remember I had it down to 97%, and the media started saying, sure, it's not 100%. I said, I've got problems. I better do it. So we took a few more weeks, and we got it down to 100%, and they admit it. And uh, it's just one of those things. But the people behind me are incredible people. They're heroes. They're heroes. And you have a couple that are going to be elected very soon, and they're going to do a real job. They're going to, they love Michigan. They love the country, and they're going to do a real job. It's an honor to be here. I'll be back a little bit before November 5th. I'll be back as many times, because this is a very important state. You win Michigan, you win the election. You win Michigan, you're going to win the election. And uh, so we'll be back, and we'll be back to Wisconsin. I'm heading for Wisconsin right now, and we're going to be back there quite a bit, too. We're going to we're going to put it all out, because if we don't win on November 5th, I think our country is going to cease to exist. It could be the last election we ever have. I actually mean that. We don't win. I think this could be the last election we ever have. That's where our country is going. So uh, I just want to thank you all. Thank you very much. And I just want to thank you all very much. It's an honor. I'll see you soon. And uh, again, give these people a big round of applause. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.